OK, let's have a look at the other new applique features in version 9. Um, I really was focused on the digitise applique with holes last time. Um, but this time I'm going to look at the other new tools because there are a few good tools. So as I mentioned in the last video, we have a new applique toolbox. So a lot of tools have been moved into this toolbox from other areas. So the digitize applique that I brushed over last time is the same as it always was in that if you select this tool, you can actually digitize a shape and enter and it will turn it into an applique immediately with whatever settings you have in the applique tool. So um, the default is a placement line, a tack down line, sorry, a cutting line, uh, oh, might be a placement line, doesn't matter. Um, one single run line, one tack down line and cover stitch. Now to preset your settings, of course, is exactly the same as before, but we have a few new features in the toolbox. But if you right click on the applique, uh, sorry, if you go to your options, object properties, and go to the applique tab, you can preset whether you want a cutting line as well as the placement line. Um, and whether you want to show the fabric and what fabric you want in there or color. Um, so um, I mentioned that last time in the last video as well. So you can set that up before you digitize. And so for instance, if I add an applique color in here, um, let's add a nice lime green and go OK. Now if I click go OK here, if I now digitize an applique, enter. I will have the fabric showing in there. So just um, use that preset. But we've always been able to do that in version 8 as well. Um, in the last video, and I'll put a link to it down below in case any of you haven't seen it yet, um, I covered the digitized applique with holes and showed you how quick it was to create um, a digi uh, an applique from an object that has a hole in it. It's just a one-click step. So there's no having to, if you've already got an object with a hole in it and you want to turn it into an applique, there is absolutely no need to have to click around the shape again. Okay, so I'm just going to undo back to a clear screen. Right. Now the next um, tool is new which is convert to applique. So um, if you haven't, if you've got an object without a hole, so let's go to our digitize and make a closed object. This only works with closed objects, but you could have a closed object that you have got from another design um, that you've saved previously or um, into that. I won't make it too complicated. Um, you can digitize your own and but really it comes into its own when you've already got an object and you want to change it to an applique. So then all you need to do is go to your applique toolbox, select your object and cl click on the convert to applique. And immediately it converts it with, as I said, with those preset settings um, or the default if you haven't preset any settings. So um, I didn't have to worry about clicking around that object again to convert it to an applique. It has just converted it to an applique with all the stitches I need. So it's just such a quick, easy way to convert an object. And so I'll give you a practical example because I'm, I've just um, organized my next Zoom meeting. And if I bring up a photo, Okay, so the next Zoom meeting that I'm doing will be um, talking about creating these little quilt motifs and quilting design mainly, but in it I also included this applique. Now, I had created a, a vector graphic from a piece of fabric. So if I close that photo and open the other design... So I had this piece of fabric and I created a vector from it. I'm not quite sure why it doesn't line up in Embroidery Canvas, but it's not important. Let's just go back to Art Canvas for a moment. 
Okay, so here it is lined up. So um, I'm sure there's a reason. There's something to do with the settings, but um, I'll have to find that out later. But I basically um, traced around with my drawing tools to create the vector graphic. So I can actually delete that um, bitmap of the um, fabric now. And the reason I create a vector graphic is because, for this very reason, I can use it in multiple ways if I save it um, when I want to digitise later. If you're going to go to the work of clicking around an object to create an embroidery design, why not create a vector first and use that um, to... Um, I'm just going to delete that. Okay, so I'm left with this line drawing. So as I said, you know, if you've got the opportunity, if you're going to have to click around a shape anyway, um, why not create a vector graphic so you can use it in multiple ways later on. So in this case I wanted to create a, uh, an applique from the outline of the body um, so I can just select that one outline and there it is just that one selected and convert that and it will convert to a running stitch outline and come into embroidery canvas. So there it is and if the legs and eye are still there from the image if I hide the image as you can see I've just got the one object. Now this is a closed object so I can while I've got that selected I can just come over here to my applique box and convert it to an applique. So it was that quick. Now it doesn't look very nice here because I forgot to resize it because it was small for the actual um, quilting motifs. But you can imagine if this was a lot bigger, let's just select it and make it a lot bigger. Okay, and even bigger. It starts to look right. The trouble is resizing when you've already got the stitches. Um, of course resizes the width of the satin stitch too. So I should have resized it before I converted it. But that's okay. Let's actually we can undo, undo, undo. Resize the running stitch one. That's better. And then convert it to the applique. That's better. All right. Now if you want to join me for that Zoom meeting, I'll put a link down below where you can go on my website to um, join me for that because as I said, I will be going over quite a bit of information including the little quilting motifs. Um, sometimes you don't want to just put a stipple around, um, so we'll go into that there. But this video is about the applique tools, so let's move on. So I'll go back to our applique um, box. Now, the next box, next option is advanced applique. It's grayed out at the moment because I don't have anything selected. The advanced applique has not changed, so that's still available. The advantage of the advanced applique, of course, is you can use open objects combined with closed objects, so long as you have spaces that are enclosed um, to create appliques. Okay, so the next tool in the applique toolbox is the remove overlaps tool. It's not available unless you've got um, something selected um, over the top of another um, ob uh, another object. It's not designed to remove overlaps from one applique to another. I'll show you why. So I'll just um, select this one and duplicate it. There we go, duplicate, and I'll left click and drag that off, and I'll make that one red so we can see the difference. So we'll just change the color to red. Okay, so if you have two applique objects over the top of each other, let's put that there. Um, if you you then have do have the remove overlaps option available then um, if I left click on that it will remove the overlap so you can see it has chopped this chunk out of the applique here but unfortunately it leaves the satin stitch boundary from the first applique so you've got two satin stitch boundaries on top of each other around there so that's not going to be very helpful um, in an embroidery um, I'll show you better tools for for doing this sort of work um, in the next section of this video, but um, I'll just undo all of that now 
and zoom out. But it does come into its own. Just get rid of that one. If you have another embroidery and you want to put an applique over the top of that embroidery. So I'll just need to have so another embroidery. So I'll just quickly make an ellipse of a fill stitch. Okay, so imagine this is another embroidery and we have our um, applique. I've still got two appliques. Let's delete that one on top of each other. There we go. So there's my applique. I take it over to my um, embroidery and put it on top. So I need to move the embroidery to the top of the color film so that the applique is on top. Um, I'll change that applique to a red so that we can see the difference more easily. Okay, so again, as I said, the Remove Overlaps tool will then be available in the applique section. So if you've got an embroidery and then you create an applique that you want to put on top and you're still in your applique box, rather than have to go back up to the edit box to get the Remove Overlaps, you've got the option available in your applique box as well. And of course, it can now use an applique object to remove overlaps. Um, whereas before, uh, you would just, it would probably just see a satin line and only remove that area. Now it will use the whole applique shape to remove the overlaps. So if I left click on that, we can see it's chopped out this section of the embroidery. Um, so that's probably where the most use for the, this tool is. Imagine if you wanted to applique a star on top of a um, Christmas tree or um, something like that. You, until you come across a scenario where you want to do it, you probably won't imagine how to do it. But um, it's just a convenience thing and also the fact that it uses the whole applique shape, not just the stitching as a cutter. Okay, the next tool in the applique toolbox is the Remove Applique Overlaps. And that was in previous versions of the software as well. Um, I don't use it very often because I actually prefer to use the Advanced Applique tool if I have um, overlapping applique areas. Uh, you get a, an even better finish, but it's a nice, quick, um, down and dirty way to com to overlap some different applique objects. Um, so that would be the tool to use instead of remove overlaps if you want to remove the applique overlaps that is put two appliques on top of each other. Um, the next option down is the combine applique. Now this would be most useful if you had several separate applique objects. So I'm just going to select that circle and delete it and I'm going to select my applique and I'm going to right click and drag a copy off there and a copy off there. So imagine you had several different separate applique objects on your um, embroidery design and you were going to um, sew them all down at once to save having to do one applique, then the next applique, then the next applique. So that's where this tool becomes very useful. So um, I've only got one applique object selected at the moment. And if you look down here at the um, applique toolbox, I cannot combine the applique. You need to select all the applique objects you want to combine. So I've now got all three selected and now my tool is available, Combine Applique. So if I left click on that, you will get a dialog. Now just before I click on the dialog, just note, um, in fact I'll cancel out of that for a moment, I'm in individual objects now. So um, you can note that each applique object has its placement line, tack down line and um, cover stitch and then the next one and so on. So I just wanted you to have a look at that color film so that you can see what happens. So now I've got all my objects selected. I click on the combine applique tool and a dialogue warning opens which is is going to break 
the appliques apart. So there will no longer be applique objects. So they suggest that you might want to save a copy of this design before you proceed so that you can always come back to the applique objects um, at a later time. So you've got that option there. It's just a little reminder. I'm just going to go OK though. So if I go OK, now you can see that it's going to stitch all my placement lines all, um, in one go and then all the tack down lines and then all the cover stitches. So if you've got a tacky backing on your applique pieces or you are cutting in place on your applique, um, you can lay your fabric over and if they're very close together and you're using the same color fabric you can just lay your fabric over and then cut around. I do find though if you've got your appliques very close together it's difficult to cut around um, the individual appliques if it's all one sheet of fabric so um, you'll have to work out how best that works for you just through practical um, experimentation but you have now got that option so you don't have to do one applique then the next applique and then the third applique or what however many you've got okay and the next option in the toolbox is the break apart tool so I'm going to undo this so that I have my appliques back and let me just select this one and this one Oh, sorry, um, I'll go into the objects and select the last two and delete them. Okay, so the break apart tool is also in the edit toolbox, but it's here for convenience. Quite often you want to put um, a cover stitch over your fabric before you sorry not a cover stitch um, some sort of embroidery embellishment over your fabric and if you're using a fill stitch like a pattern fill you want to cover the um, edges of that pattern fill with your cover stitch from your applique and you can't do that if you haven't broken apart the applique because if you have um, I wonder I'll have to I will duplicate this again sorry just drag a copy over there and I'll break that one apart so you can see now that this one here is an applique if I click on it um, they both are um, all three select so it's combined together you you can't um, move individual parts around um, this one second one I'm going to break apart so I'll click on the break apart and now I can select each individual object so that then allows me let me just make a cover uh, cover stitch out of this one so I'll delete that one I'll delete that one and oh, I need to get into there to get the cover stitch it's left the fabric in there, that's interesting. I'll hide that fabric um, that hides all the fabric. Put it, put it back for a minute. And I'll just turn this now is a satin, just an ordinary satin border. So if I turn that into, oh, it won't let me turn it into a fill, even though I've broken it apart. Let me break that apart again. All right, now I can turn that into a fill. Okay, so this is an example where you might have a pattern fill you want to stitch before the satin stitch of your applique. Let me just change the color. All right. So as I said, this one here is an applique. It's joined together. I can't move that stitching anywhere. I get the little, no, you can't do that unless you go right to the top um, symbol. So I need to break this applique apart in order to do that. So break it apart. Now they're individual objects. Now I can move this one to just above the satin stitch. Now I needed to align that of course. Now you don't see it because for some reason the fabric or color is on top. Um, don't worry it will stitch after you place the fabric. So I'll just hide the fabric and you'll be able to see that stitching. Okay 
and we were always able to do that, um, but we had to go into the edit toolbox to find the break apart tool. Now the very last um, tool I need to undo back to an ordinary applique again. Oh, show the fabric, Carol, and just delete. That's an applique. Just delete this one. All right. So when you have an applique object, you can now, and this is really exciting for you people with cutting machines, um, you can export a cutting file. So if I left click on that, I'll get a dialog open. Now I'm in applique, so it has a tick or by, di by default next to applique shapes. But if I was in, uh, I have to experiment this with this a bit more, but if I had, was in, um, not in applique, if I'd created a cutwork outline um, and suddenly decided I didn't want to use my cutwork tool, I, it looks like I'll be able to create an SVG from that outline as well and also from embroidery shapes. So it doesn't just um, relate to applique shapes by the looks of it, which is really excellent. So we can export the current design um, and or export selected objects only. Automatically distributed, I've got to find out what that means, um, or as digitized. So um, it's to do with the layout. Oh, I would imagine that would be how the shapes are laid out on your cutting file, your SVG file, whether they are going to be laid out just as the shapes are digitized on your workspace or whether it's going to distribute them more um, economically into one area. So that's what those two options would be. Um, and then you can choose where it goes. Now they apparently have a default file called My Cutting Files in your My Embroidery file in Embroidery Library. So if you want to take advantage of that, you can just leave it on the default or you can send it to another area and of course give it a design name. It looks like there are options here, although they're all greyed out. So I've got a little bit more learning to do on this one, but that is all new. And so that means you can... Um, then you will have an SVG file you can take to your cutting machine or convert to the format that you need for your cutting machine. So it's a, it's a graphic file. That covers everything in the new applique toolbox that I can think of. So don't forget to visit my website and see what other options I have available. And don't forget August's Zoom meeting. So if you can't come to the meeting, you can still purchase it and you will get the recording of the meeting after the meeting.